Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jauhri and this video is about dining philosopher's problem formulated by Itzker Dijkstra in 1965. The question is, what is dining philosopher's problem and how is it relevant today? The dining philosopher's problem is like this. Five philosophers codenamed P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4 are seated counterclockwise on a circular dining table. For each philosopher, there is a plate of hot steaming spaghetti and we have five forks F0, F1, F2, F3 and F4. Forks are placed between the plates of philosophers such that there is one fork between any two philosophers and fork F0 is to the left of philosopher P0, fork F1 is to the left of philosopher P1 and so on. The philosophers do two things, one at a time. They think and they eat alternatingly for small finite durations of time. Thinking is no problem, but for eating spaghetti, a philosopher needs two forks kept on the two sides of his or her plate. After eating, a philosopher puts the forks in their original place. The philosophers should be able to think and eat indefinitely. The philosophers have an infinite capacity to eat and there is infinite amount of spaghetti which is replenished automatically in the plates. The philosophers do not talk to each other and no philosopher knows whether the others want to think or eat. So what is the problem here? The system can easily get into a deadlock situation. If by chance all philosophers decide to eat at the same time and pick up the left fork, they all get stuck because none can pick the second fork required for eating and the situation won't change in future because each philosopher has the fork his or her neighbor is waiting for. We definitely need some more rules in place so that this deadlock situation does not occur. The second question is, how is the dining philosopher's problem relevant today? It appears to be too contrived. It is true that this situation would not happen in real life, but equivalent problems occur in programming of systems comprising of concurrent tasks. The tasks compete for scarce resources. So if we solve the dining philosopher's problem, we get better equipped to design systems with concurrent tasks, for example, multi-threaded systems. Before we proceed to the solutions for dining philosopher's problem, let us pause a little and look at the concept of deadlock. There are four conditions that are necessary for deadlock to happen in a system. The first is mutual exclusion. The threads must hold at least one resource exclusively. Here the philosophers hold forks in an exclusive mode. The second necessary condition is hold and wait. The threads must hold a resource and wait for another resource. In this case, a philosopher thread holds a fork and waits for another fork. The third condition is that resources cannot be preempted. That is, it is not possible to take back a resource from a thread. The thread must voluntarily release the resource after completing its work. And the fourth necessary condition is that of a circular weight. There must be a set of threads T0, T1, dot dot dot, Tn minus 1, such that T0 is waiting for a resource held by T1, T1 is waiting for a resource held by T2 and so on and also Tn-1 is waiting for a resource held by T0. This happens when all philosophers pick up the left fork and wait for the right fork held by the neighbor. So we see in case of the dining philosopher's problem, all necessary conditions of deadlock are met when all philosophers pick up the left fork and wait for the right fork. The first solution 
involves ordering of resources. The forks are numbered F0, F1, F2, F3 and F4 and placed counterclockwise starting with the left of philosopher P0. A philosopher must pick up the lower numbered fork kept near his or her spaghetti plates first and then the other fork. If the lower numbered fork is not available, the philosopher blocks. So the case when all philosophers want to eat at the same time, philosopher P0 picks up fork F0, philosopher P1 picks up fork F1, philosopher P2 picks up F2 and P3 picks up F3. What happens to philosopher P4? P4 has forks F0 and F4 and since F0 is already taken by philosopher P0, philosopher P4 must block for fork F0 and not pick up fork F4. So philosopher P3 gets fork F4 in addition to fork F3 and philosopher P3 can eat. The circular weight condition has been broken and there is no deadlock. And this is the program for dining philosophers to avoid deadlock with ordering of resources. So first the header files and some buffers. The buffers are used for printing diagnostic messages. There are many threads and if each thread prints messages, the output would get mixed up. So there is a background thread spooler which prints messages on the terminal. Threads simply write messages in the buffers and the spooler reads the buffers and prints messages on the terminal. There are 5 forks and we have an array of 5 mutexes, one for each fork. To pick up a fork, a philosopher needs to acquire the corresponding mutex. We initialize the indexes for the spooler and we also initialize the random number generator. The philosophers eat and think for random durations. So the random number generator is handy there. We create the spooler thread and the five philosopher threads and we wait for them to complete. But the philosophers think and eat forever. So it is kind of infinite loop. Now this is a philosopher thread. We have five such threads and each philosopher is an infinite loop. In the loop, the philosopher decides whether to eat or think. If the philosopher decides to eat, he or she acquires the first fork which has the same ID as philosopher ID for philosophers 0, 1, 2 and 3. For philosopher 4, the first fork to be acquired is fork 0. Once the first fork is acquired, the philosopher tries to acquire the second fork. The second fork is philosopher ID plus 1. For philosophers 0, 1, 2 and 3. For philosopher 4, the second fork ID is 4. After acquiring the two forks, the philosopher eats for some time and after eating is over, the philosopher releases the two forks. And instead of eating, if the philosopher decides to think, he or she does that and there are no issues. So this is what happens for each of the five philosophers. And this is the function to print string called by the threads and this is the background spooler thread which prints messages. We can compile and run the Dining Philosophers program. If we look at the output log, we find that there is no deadlock. But the solution is not fair. Suppose P1 and P4 are eating and P0 wants to eat. Now P4 has fork F0 and P1 has fork F1, the forks required by P0 to eat. So P0 cannot eat until both P4 and P1 stop eating and release the forks. It might so happen that P1 stops eating, releases fork F1, but P4 continues eating. So P0 still can't eat. And just when P4 
was about to release fork p1 started eating again so p0 goes hungry till both p1 and p4 stop eating and now the second solution to the dining philosopher's problem the second solution involves taking help of a central arbitrator for deciding which philosopher gets to eat a philosopher who wants to eat takes permission of the central arbitrator who is the waiter the waiter is implemented as a mutex only one philosopher can acquire the mutex and so only one philosopher can eat at any time so this solution has less parallelism as compared to the first solution the positives of this solution are that it is simple easy to understand and implement and works very well and this is the program for solution of dining philosopher's problem with central arbitrator the header files initialization are the same as before we have a waiter mutex for taking permission to eat from the waiter and rest of the initialization is the same as before and here is the philosopher code if philosopher wants to eat he or she takes permission from the waiter that is the philosopher acquires the waiter mutex now to get the first fork the fork id is philosopher id philosopher p4 can pick up fork f4 on the left she does not have to worry about picking up the lower numbered fork anymore and fork 2 id is philosopher id plus 1 except for philosopher p4 whose second fork id is 0 actually there is no contention for forks since only one philosopher is eating at a time he or she always gets the forks and fork mutex is really not necessary you can get rid of fork mutex and replace fork mutex operations with simple printf statements the rest of the code is same as in the earlier example we can compile and run the dining philosophers program with central arbitrator and we come to the end of this video you can find all this information at https colon double slash tiny dot one slash dining please share this video on social networking and subscribe to my channel thanks very much for watching take care and stay safe